Hi, I'm Steve. Uh, and today I'm going to be presenting on behalf of our team, Fred, Jason, Alex, Kenneth, Kendall, and Stephen, our paper Freeform Templates, combining freeform curation with structured templates. There's a long history of using digital whiteboards to curate design activity. They provide a lot of the familiar affordances of sticky notes that can be edited or rearranged, but they also provide some unique and new affordances for collaboration, uh, such as commenting features and being able to see others' cursors um, you know, in, in the 2D canvas. Prior research has investigated ways that these whiteboards um, are used to support freeform curation. Uh, that is to allow designers to gather, assemble, and annotate their ideas and design artifacts. However, for non-experts, templates are often used to scaffold design activity. This scaffolding helps them know what steps to follow and which activities to complete. And while templates may be beneficial to guide novices, we often don't associate templates with creativity. Conversely, templates are often considered antithetical to the creative process especially when we compare templates to the kinds of free-form, open-ended experiences that people have with whiteboards. So this study explores whether the uh, templates, which provide benefits for scaffolding, when combined with sort of free-form, open-ended um, online whiteboard environment, can still provide those benefits of scaffolding without sacrificing creative expression. And so we conducted a, a large study with 114 design students. And this class was hosted online during the COVID-19 pandemic. Students did their work in the Zoom breakouts during class, and they continued their work outside of class. And during these uh, classes, they were using a Miro online whiteboard along with a template that we provided to them. And so our analysis includes a content analysis of the digital white or the online whiteboards, along with student survey responses. So this is the template that we provided students uh, within the class, and students work through this, moving uh, top down for each column, and moving generally from left to right. Here we have four activities that took place sequentially across multiple class periods. And in the first example, um, we can see how the activities were scaffolded. So here we can see each activity had a title, it had a description, and it had this large input area for students to add their design ideas. And here we can see four team members that are affinity mapping their user research. Here's another class period. Um, we can see that there's two activities, one related to problem framing and one related to ideation. And in the first activity, when they're coming up with problem statements, they could see examples of the problem statements before generating their own. And then they would take these problem statements into this next activity around ideation, where they were required to um, brainstorm as many ideas as they could for each of the problems in parallel. Uh, so this example shows how different sized input boxes implicitly suggested to students how much content they should be adding. And so in terms of findings, we found many of the familiar benefits associated with procedural scaffolding, right? It provided a starting point, a process to follow, and the ability to reflect on past work. So here we can see it helped us get started with the project. Um, it really helped with the planning process. This next student says that, you know, provided guidelines of what was expected from the team. And then finally, the student talks a little bit about potential for uh, reflection, where they say, we were able to go back and see the previous steps. The whiteboard helped us to organize information in a clear way. And we could just go with the flow. So in addition to these familiar benefits that we see associated with scaffolding, we also saw some unique benefits around um, collaboration. So here we can see uh, the student says that the templates were especially useful when working with people that I don't know, um, because it made a base template that we could all follow regardless of our experience level. This other student says, uh, we got real-time updates of what each team member was doing while we were working together. Um, so again, kind of being able to monitor and see what's going on with their team. And finally, this um, the student says, the whiteboard was our home base for working on the project. Uh, it was easy for us to expand on our work since all of our previous steps were in one place. The templates kept us on track and they helped us to understand uh, how different stages in the project interacted and influenced with each other. Um, so here being able to not only understand what to do in each of the activities, but also seeing how they could flow from one activity into the next and how they were sort of building on those ideas over time. Um, but what's really interesting here is it sounds like these templates served as somewhat of a common ground for students um, and grounding their design work um, sort of in this shared process. Now, beyond the uh, survey responses, we also uh, did an, a content analysis of the whiteboards and found a lot of really interesting things of how students were working with inside and outside of the uh, template. So in terms of working inside the template, we found that about 50% of students, uh, or so to say 50% of the whiteboards exhibited some evidence of further organizing content inside the template. And so here we see a couple of uh, instances where students were being asked to just add sticky notes with some content. And we can see different instances where they're uh, drawing lines and, and connections between sticky notes and you know, potentially engaging in like some systems thinking of how different ideas were related to each other um, and being able to make those creative connections. Uh, here's another activity where we ask students to put their uh, insights from their design research 
And we kind of initially expected them to put a bunch of post-it notes in here. And what we found was that students did a lot of different uh, activities that we hadn't asked for. So here we can see a mind map where students are connecting a bunch of ideas to each other. Uh, we can also see here a thematic analysis, the sort of affinity mapping activity that maybe is not surprising given you know, that that's what they were asked to do. And then finally, we're seeing students dropping in some data and other information and even um, being able to use that data to support some observations that they have. So here we can see a line drawn between uh, the data and the sticky note that they've made. As another example of students creating additional organization within the templates, um, most students used color coding. So we saw 31 out of 34 teams um, were using color coding uh, to further organize their information. We observed a variety of different ways that students were using color to curate their design work. So they used color to differentiate team members' contributions. They also used it to differentiate activities. So here we can see the problems are pink and the solutions are blue. And then finally, all the way on the right, we can see they actually were, in some cases, tracking themes throughout activities. So here we can see three colored um, sticky notes. Those were three problems that they came up with. And then in the ideation activity, they came up with solutions for each of those problems. And then on the right, um, you can see a little bit, they had um, storyboards and each of the colors uh, correspond to each of the different problems and solutions they come up with. Now, in addition to working inside the template to further organize and curate their design work, we also observed that students use the large open canvas um, in the whiteboard to um, do additional work outside the template. Um, and so students use space outside the uh, template to do activities like tracking their tasks and meta team organization work. So here we can see um, an example where they have a sticky note that's outside the template, which has some action items for the team to work on. Another activity that we saw pretty frequently was summarizing. And so here we could see um, an example where they're using the drawer or they're using sticky notes in order to summarize some of the observations and ideas that they'd come up with to that point. We also saw some students that were using comments for this feature. In addition, they created some supplemental design activities for themselves. So while we didn't provide students with a priority matrix, we saw one instance where students created one themselves um, and used it to identify which ideas to move forward with. Um, so this is a sort of supplemental activity that this team happened to be aware of existing and, you know, they wanted to add that to their design process. And so again, you know, this provides an opportunity for them to go sort of beyond what's templated and, you know, do what they think is best for their design work. And finally, we saw instances where participants annotated their design work. And so here's an example where they dot voted for their favorite storyboards. In one of the more extreme cases of working outside the lines, uh, we saw students actually completely omitting some of the scaffolding work. And so in this case, we can see an example where students have a link to a specialized tool where they did the, the storyboarding activities. So um, this wasn't a one-off. This, uh, this happened in a couple of cases where students pointed to external resources um, and external, external tools that were specialized for some of the tasks that were um, guided in the template. So the implications are around this idea of freeform uh, template. So freeform templates are the idea that we can use the uh, online whiteboards in the sort of freeform open space along with templates by providing really large input areas. We found that they provided some really interesting benefits of scaffolding while also affording the space for freeform curation and additional design work and for students to really sort of take ownership of their design process even though there was this scaffolded process. And so this is a pretty radical way of thinking about templates. Uh, templates are typically meant to be followed somewhat rigidly. And we think that there's a lot of really interesting opportunities to use these kinds of uh, freeform whiteboard environments in the future uh, for this sort of templated work, even outside of the context of design and creativity. Another interesting observation that we had was around design data. So these input areas are actually capturing key design information. So in this case, it's asking for a problem and it's asking for candidate solutions. Um, and this ends up being labeled data that could be used for computation or could be fed forward to future design teams. And so understanding how these templates might actually be used to um, not only scaffold design work, but also be able to collect really uh, important design information. And that concludes our talk. Uh, really hope to see you at Creativity and Cognition. Bye.